Now let me introduce you to a new function. It's a logical function introduced in Office 2019. And for those using Microsoft 365, you would be able to access this function. We are talking about the switch function here. And how do we use that? Well, this is pretty much the way how you can achieve the result with the help of if function as well. But the only thing is that in case of if you need multiple layers of if function, it helps you ease out on that part. Well then, isn't it the same as what the ifs function does? Well, at times you can use the switch function and the ifs function interchangeably, but the core purpose for both the functions are different. And there would be times when you may not be able to use both the functions for the same result. But for now, let me just show you something here. Now here we have a case of wherein one of the telephone executives had received a feedback from one of the customers and she has been rated by these. And now as per the norms of the company, she would be graded as either very poor, poor, average, good, or excellent. And how do we get that? Well, we can make use of the switch function here. Switch function. And what is the expression? Five, comma. Now, for this parameter, if the value is one, then return the value as very poor. And I would like to lock the reference using the dollar sign, comma. And there is another one for two, but I do not see that here. So I'll click here and use the up arrow key on the keyboard so that it can be highlighted and lock the reference, the row. And then again, same thing for the remark. I click aside and use our arrow keys to reach to right cell. And again, lock the row reference here. And then if it is three, then show as the average. If it is four, show as good. And if it is five, show as excellent. So this is absolutely fine. And yes, it is five, that's excellent. Let me copy and paste this formula down here. Three denotes average, yes. Four is good, three is average. Six is any, wow. Now the customer, whoever would have rated this agent, she's so happy with the resolution that she gave six. Now at times there would be certain forms where you may not get the option to select or a drop down list to select from one to five. Maybe it's a simple text box that you can just enter the number. Either intentionally or accidentally, the customer would have rated this agent as six. So then how do we get that? I do not like to see this error over here. It's a hash any. This could have been fixed had this been number six, let's say, of all the cells which have already been selected and referred in this function. This is one of those. If this was to be six, this would be fixed, but then the number five become any because five is no longer defined now. So at times like this, I wouldn't want to see a hash any error, but rather I would like to see something else. How about a question mark? Either I can put a question mark in double quotes, that's fine, and hit enter. So this becomes the default value. So notice the format of this function, switch, First thing, expression, I mean, where do you want to check? It's this cell, value one. That means we say, what if this value is one, then return very poor. What if this value over here is two, then return poor. And if it is three, then average, four, then good, and so on. But then we have six, and we did not define what if it is six. So at such times, if we get a result, anything that is beyond one, two, three, four, five, we would want to have a default value that's either as a question mark or maybe an NA. Now without a hashtag, this does not look like an error, but just a non-applicable. But rather I would put a question mark here and that gives a query. And this becomes a default value and hit enter and you get this. Take a look at this. If I were to change this to six, we have this. What if this was minus one? It's still an error over here. What if it was just zero? It's a hash any error. Why? 
because we did not define the default value here but here we did let me show you here here in this one we did so what this if this becomes minus one it will remain question mark so this function works good let me apply this to other cells we did and let's try this out what if this is now minus one it's blank what if it is a zero so minus one zero six none of them have been defined in this list and hence you are getting a question mark because the question mark is the default result that you will get if none of the other criteria match and this is how the switch function works now moving on let us try something more using the switch function we'll try to execute something which we have already done with the help of the ifs function now here we'll try this out switch i say switch 72.5 okay now this value less than 50 i lock the reference comma it should be f grade 72 less than 60 i give a e grade and then 72 less than 70 i give the d grade then we have 72 less than 80 then we give a c grade further 72 less than 90 we give a b grade and then 72 less than 100 we give a grade now what if it is the same as 100 well, I can define this as 72 equals 100. Then return as A plus. And what if it does not meet any of the criteria? Maybe it could be an NA. So I'll just put any in double quotes and hit enter. And here we have this. But let me just fix the reference here. It should be the D over here in this case. So that means there is something missing. So we did exactly the way how we had worked earlier, but this time it did not work. It is giving the default message of any. That means although this is 72.5, it falls under less than 80. It should have returned C, but it's giving an error. What went wrong here? We tried a similar one over here and it perfectly worked, right? We selected this. You need to understand one thing while working with the switch function that here in this case okay there is no comparison that's happening it's either one two three four five it's same as it is you do not have 5.5 what if this was 5.5 you see it gives an error so this is pretty straightforward and very much doable okay but we need to compare these things these scores and so ideally this one we would have to make this as a true expression so that means switch true and then start comparing c3 less than 50 then it has to be f and so on and now i hit enter and see it's a c grade i apply this formula down and perfect now it works fine 49.5 is less than 50 hence it's f 59.5 is less than 60 so it's e grade so we do not have any a grades over here or a plus but let's see if this were to be 100 what happens well it's a plus and what if this was 95 a grade so this function works perfectly this is the only change that we need to make that's changing this to true now switch function generally takes or compares values as it is that means there cannot be any kind of logical expressions over here like greater than less than that means you cannot make a comparison here it's generally an exact match that it looks for like what we noticed here in order to fix this or as a workaround we try to force switch function to get into this mode of searching for this or comparing this value because it does not matter whether this is 72.5 or not but end of day there should be some relevant value and if we put a true here as a workaround switch function proceeds further 
and starts testing the case. And depending on the test result for each of these cases, accordingly, it returns the result. And that's it. Okay, what if this was 101? Well, it gives you an error, any message and not an error. And that's how it works. Let us explore the rest of the logical functions in Excel. So we have these many, most of them have already been covered. We have discussed about and. Now false is a function here, but what does it do? It just returns the value as false. So often we are better off by just typing the word false rather than using it as a function. It does not make much of a difference here. But at times if you do not see a feasibility or it's not possible to use the word false and execute your functions or your formulas, then probably the false function can help you in that case. And just like we have the false function here, we also have the true function here. It just returns the value as true. Then if function is something we have discussed multiple times earlier as well. If error, we had discussed during basic Excel and I will revisit it here. If any is, it works similar to if error, but only that its scope is limited. We'll discuss about it shortly. If's function, I have explained it earlier. Now not function is something different, let me explain you. But although we have workaround, it's very rarely used. Or function we have discussed, switch is a new function, which was also covered a while back. True function, as I mentioned, just like false, it does nothing but just return the value as true. XOR or exclusive OR has also been covered while covering while discussing about AND and OR functions. So what do we have left here? We have false, true, not, if error, if any. These are the five functions here. And like I mentioned, if you were to select false and just close the brackets, well, it returns the result as false. That's it. And what about the true function? It does the similar job, but it returns the result as true. And these are nothing but in binary form, false denotes zero and true denotes one. Now, what about the not function? The not function is something when you test a condition, if the result is true, the not function returns as false. Let me show you how. Let's say we have X and Y. Okay, X is denoted by number five and Y by eight. Now is X greater than Y? I would like to test that. So I would say equals five greater than eight. It's false. But what if I do not want to see exactly the same result? I mean to say, what if I want to negate this answer? If this is false, I want this to be true. And if the result is true, then I want this to be false. The other way around. Okay, just the opposite. So in order to do that, I have a not function in Excel. And then I compare five greater than eight. I close the bracket. And here it is. Five is not greater than eight. So it results true. And then under the not function. So how does it get not? And you have true. It was a false earlier. Five is not greater than eight. So if it returns false, the not negates it and converts it to true. Likewise, if not, you have true within it. It negates it to false. That's the job of the not function. Now, where can you use this? Well, at times, in case uh, there would be times where, so in this case, let's say you want to execute something when it is false, but do nothing when it is true. So here I would say, if not, I did not use an equal sign. Let me try that. I say if and the not function five greater than eight. If not, then execute, I would say execute, else stop. Now what would be the result? Take a guesswork. This results in false and under the not function, this converts to true. And since it's true over here by default, Excel will execute or the if function will execute and display this. 
Had I not used the not function, it would have returned as stop. Now what if I want to just check not equal to is 5 equal to 8? Well, it's a false. Now what if I do not want to use the if function, but I want to see is 5 equal to 8? So we have one way approach would be to use the not equal to sign. This indicates not equal to sign. This indicates equals. And if you want to show is 5 not equal to 8, then I use the less than sign and greater than sign over here. In Excel, it indicates not equal to. Hit enter and you get true as a result. That means they are not equal. So this is one approach or else I would say not 5 equals 8. It returns the result as true. Now there are very rare scenarios and rare occasions where you might want to use this not function. Well, most of the time you do have better options over there. It's very rare scenarios that are very limited scope for usage of this not function. Just as you would have noticed in the switch function and the ifs function, if none of the criteria match, then towards the end you have a default value that to be returned. So even in that time, you are better off without the not function there. The key purpose of not function is just to negate the result of the logical test. Now, if error function is generally, let's say if there is an error here, for example, I want to divide 200 by zero. You remember it gives you a div zero error and I know that currently it's showing as a zero, but maybe it exactly is not a zero. Let's say this cell, I want to divide it by this cell. The formula is perfect, but it's giving me a div zero error. The moment I enter number 10, it's perfect. So at such times, I would want this to be encapsulated within the if error function. And then in double quotes, I would mention what to do. I might say just put a zero or if it's a number, I don't need the double quotes unless I'm typing some text. So it's a zero. The moment I hit 10, we get the answer. If it is five, we still get the answer. But if it is blank, it's a zero. Now, if any error does the same job, but the only difference is if error function is quite versatile, it responds to any form of hash errors that you get. But in case of if any, it returns the value you specify if the expression resolves to hash any error. Otherwise, results returns the result of the expression. That means it will only handle or deal with the error hash any. It is least concerned about the div zero error. So let me show you if hash any, I say 200 divided by zero and I put value if any, just put a zero. You see, it gives you a div zero error because it's not a any error. So this if any function fails to capture this and fix it. And that's the reason we have the if error function. And if error function also handles the any errors. So at times this is redundant, I would say.